If you're an information systems major or you're considering majoring in the field, it might be confusing to understand what jobs to apply for. So I've created this list of most likely jobs you'd qualify for. This is an updated video from a video I created back in 2018, which now includes six main paths with a bonus seventh option. Before we dive into the first six, one important thing to note is that these jobs exist to meet the complex demands of large corporations and have two major flavors. The first is a corporate employee. This means you are hired by a large organization to perform one of the roles as a permanent employee. As an entry level professional, the goal is to grow you into the role. The bigger the organization, the more internal opportunities to grow and move into different roles. It should also be noted that most large organizations have similar challenges from an information systems perspective, so the skills are easily transferable across different companies if you are good at what you do. The second is an IT consultant. An IT consultant works for a consulting company. The consulting company gets hired by a large organization to work on projects for a window of time, typically the duration of a specific project. Then they are off to the next project at a potentially different organization. This means if you are good at what you do, you'll be able to jump from project to project and different organizations within your role at a consulting company. There are pros and cons to each, and if that's something you'd like me to cover in a later video, let me know in the comments. The important thing to know is that for each of the six roles I'll cover, you can do them as a corporate employee or as a consultant through a consulting company. I will stay kind of high level in the job description, focusing on the main points of the job and how they differ from one another. The average starting salary for all these jobs, at least in the US, is around the same across the board, so the salary won't be a major decision point between these. So with all that said, let's go. Number one, software developer. As a software developer, your job is to develop applications, pure and simple. Obviously being able to understand programming languages is important, but to be successful, you have to be passionate about learning new things and problem solving. Technologies are constantly changing, so your ability to constantly update your working tool belt will be key to success. Other common and similar job titles are programmer or software engineer, and this is probably the most technical role on the list. Number two is a data analyst or business intelligence analyst, whose primary role is to look at data to find meaning. Understanding ways to extract, combine, and compare data to answer questions and provide insight to decision makers. If you enjoy subjects like math or statistics to solve problems, this is a path you might enjoy. Number three, quality assurance or QA analyst. The primary role of a QA analyst is to find problems with the application. You are a tester. Your job is to understand what the system is supposed to do and accomplish and find any instances it's failing to accomplish that. This can be done manually to test new software and it can be done via automated testing. Detail-oriented individuals would thrive as QA analysts. Number four, business analyst. The primary role of a business analyst is to understand and communicate. You have to understand what it is that the business is wanting to accomplish, the people, processes, constraints, and the system that drive the business. Comprehension, analysis, communication, and interaction skills are key to being successful as a business analyst. Other title variations might be functional analyst, systems analyst, and implementation analyst, which is a more common role in the consulting world. Number five, cybersecurity analyst. This is one of the most fast growing spaces for an information systems major. This role in many ways is similar to that of a business analyst in that you need to understand goals, needs, data, and processes. However, you are doing it with the intent of perfecting, protecting information while still making it accessible to those who need it. This role requires you to stay up to date on the latest threat types and legislation surrounding information security. Number six, project manager. The primary role of this person is to manage people, keep track of schedules, and communicate risks on a project. This person doesn't tell people what to do, instead works with the teams to understand what needs to be done, who needs to do them, and when. That person then communicates to leadership and other teams when those things are at risk, so, this, so that the decision makers can decide what to do about it. Strong communication and organizational skills are required by this role. For an entry-level project manager, you are likely to manage a smaller portion of a larger project to get acquainted with the role. Note that once you've been doing any of these roles for a while, you can become a solo act or independent contractor, basically working as a specialist at what you do. You are basically capable of saying, if you have a need for this specific thing, I can probably do it better than most. Taking your career this way is usually the highest paying hourly, but you're not always guaranteed work. You're responsible for paying for your own training if you want to upgrade your skill set, and 
you likely don't get any sort of benefits like a retirement plan or insurance. This actually leads me to role number seven, entrepreneurial contractor. If you have an entrepreneurial spirit, then coming out of school, you'll have a better understanding of how to use information systems to be productive. You can learn the ins and outs of specific software suites and market yourself to small businesses that often can't afford giant consulting companies or have a full-time IT department to resolve their specific needs. Many of these systems are straightforward to technically minded information system students, but are hard to navigate for non-technical business owners who can't invest time learning new, the newest technologies. It can be as straightforward as setting up Google Business Workspaces for nonprofits so they can have email, documents, etc. in one place. You can start by getting your foot in the door by helping an aunt, an uncle, or a family friend create some efficiencies in their business, then offer your services to similar places of business once you see success. Final note is to remember that the world is always changing, so don't limit yourself to the content of this video. Watch other videos, do some research, seek mentors if you find yourself needing more guidance. If you found that helpful and gave you a little bit of clarity on some of your career options, let me know with a thumbs up. If you have additional questions or want more details about a particular route, feel free to ask me in the comments where I'll answer you there or create a new video. So subscribe to see your questions get answered and thanks for watching.